focus of this particular lecture is going to be on mutations, right? And mutations are changes that are made to the DNA, to our DNA, right? Um, uh, to our DNA sequence. Uh, and there are a lot of different things that can cause uh, mutations. Um, uh, we have mistakes that are made during DNA replication. We also have um, all kinds of physical factors that can uh, cause mutations within our DNA. So we're going to take a look at a few of the different types of mutations here today and the results of those particular mutations. So the first type of mutation we'll take a look at are point mutations uh, that can affect protein structure and function. Okay, so a mutation is simply a change to the genetic information of the cell. A point mutation is a chemical change in a single base pair. So at one point in the DNA strand, there is a chemical change to a single base pair. Um, if the, that mutation occurs in a gamete or a germ cell, which germ cells are the cells that divide to produce our gametes. And if you don't know what gametes are, gametes are our sperm cells and our egg cells, right? Uh, so if the mutation is in a gamete or a germ cell that, produce, that is uh, dividing to produce gametes, that mutation will then get, can then get passed on to the next generation if the particular gamete where the mutation occurred um, or the germ cell that produced those gametes, um, if uh, the gametes are then involved in fertilization, then the mutation gets passed on. Uh, the example you see here is uh, the muta point mutation that causes sickle cell anemia, where a single base pair is changed, right, from um, an A uh, to a T, I'm sorry, from a T to an A, and then when that's transcribed, um, instead of having an A here at this second position of this codon, a U is put into place. Uh, and as a result, instead of having the amino acid glutamic acid, which is uh, a, a charged amino acid, you have a nonpolar amino acid put into place, which is valine, which causes hemoglobin to fold up improperly. Uh, it causes then the cells to be become sickle shaped and leads to all the problems associated with sickle cell anemia. Okay, and that's just caused by one change to one uh, base in one codon uh, in the gene for hemoglobin. Okay, so there are different types of point mutations, right? Um, substitution, a substitution is a type of point mutation, uh, and the result of a substitution could be a silent mutation that has no effect on the protein due to the redundancy of the genetic code. So if we uh, have an A put in place instead of a G and a U instead of a C here in this example, the amino acid doesn't change because of that wobble because we have uh, same, the same uh, different codons can be used for the same amino acid, right? So G, the codon GGC or the codon GGU both code for the amino acid glycine. So there's no change to the shape or structure of the protein, no change to its function. That is a silent mutation. Um, you can have missense mutations where one amino acid is changed to another, right? So here we see that we have it in the normal or wild type, that's the normal gene. We have a C here, okay? That's replaced with a T, uh, which leads to an, a codon instead of GGC is AGC. And so a different amino acid, serine, is put in place of glycine. And the effect of this can be big or small, depending on the similarity of the new amino acid to the proper one. If they're very similar, there be, may be no change to the protein and no change to its function. If they're very different, there could be a big change in the protein structure. And that big change could be very detrimental to the protein, or uh, it could be beneficial. Maybe it uh, gives a new function, uh, new function to, the, to the cell that has this particular protein with this mutation. Um, more often than not, though, we're going to see these are harmful, um, but we could have beneficial mutations, obviously, um, over the course of time. So we can also end up with what's uh, referred to as a nonsense mutation, where when the mutation occurs, um, here we see in the wild type, we have a T in the template strand, and that's replaced with an A here leading to uh, a codon of UAG. So we get a stop codon way, way, way too early. Uh, and so what happens is that the, our polypeptide that's made is gonna be much, much shorter and non-functional. This is a very drastic type of, of mutation here. 
uh, because our protein has been truncated or shortened. Um, we can also have mutations that are insertions or deletions where uh, base pairs are added or lost. It could just be a single base pair inserted or deleted. It could be multiple base pairs inserted or deleted, okay? Um, and these are typically more disastrous than substitutions because they lead to what are called frame shift mutations if they aren't in multiples of three. So if you just insert or delete, if we just delete one U here, then this amino acid is changed and all these bases shift one to the left. Uh, and so we get different amino acid here and another different one here and here because we've shifted uh, the reading frame of which three uh, bases are being read. So an example of what I mean by reading frame, right? If we're reading every three, the fox ate the cat. That is a, that makes a, a lot of sense, right? That is a normal sentence that has meaning to it. But if I just delete the T and then shift everything one bait, one letter to the left, it changes everything. Hef, oxa, tet, heck, at, none of that makes any sense, right? The re, our reading frame sh was shifted over to the left one. Uh, and that's similar to what happens with an insertion or deletion of, of bases uh, within our DNA. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, like I said, if the, it's a frame shift, if we don't have an insertion or deletion in, in a multiple of three, if three bases are deleted here, if one single uh, triplet is deleted, then one amino acid will be missing. Uh, and everything else will be the same. Uh, wouldn't necessarily be as drastic, but it certainly could be. Now, like I said, sometimes mistakes are made in the process of um, replication, and, and that, that just happens. Um, those that can cause mutations. But there are also physical and chemical agents that interact with our DNA and cause mutations. And anything that does that is called a mutagen. Okay, so some physical factors that can cause uh, um, DNA mutations, cause bases to be uh, inserted, deleted, substituted would be physical factors like X-rays and UV rays. Okay, we can have chemical mutagens as well that are analogs that are similar in structure to DNA bases and pair incorrectly in DNA replication. So they insert themselves into the DNA and distort the double helix, or they cause changes in bases, which cause changes in uh, pairing properties, right? Uh, so 5-bromouracil uh, is one example of a mutagen that uh, is a chemical that is very similar to our DNA bases that can insert itself during DNA replication into our DNA. Uh, and it is very similar to thymine, so it will bind with adenine. But during replication, it can ionize. And when that happens, when it ionizes, then it will pair with guanine, okay? And so as a result, where there should have been an adenine uh, during replication, there is now a guanine in its place um, within our DNA strand. Okay, um, and so that is that is a problem. And that is one example of a mutagen. Um, most things that cause cancer, carcinogens are usually mutagenic, and most mutagens are carcinogenic. So X-rays and UV rays are mutagens that can cause cancer. Um, all the chemicals in smoke, in smoke that if you uh, smoke cigarettes, right? Those those are carcinogens that cause mutations. Um, to your DNA, which leads to cancer. So mutagens are things to try to avoid. So uh, that was a brief lecture on uh, mutations. And if you have any questions, you know, we'll ask them in class. Have a great day, everybody. Go Bears!